Welcome to Restaurant Influencers presented by Entrepreneur. My name is Sean Walcha, founder of Cali BBQ and Cali BBQ Media. In life, in the restaurant business, and in the new creator economy, we learn through lessons and stories. We're grateful for our title sponsor, Toast, our primary technology partner at our barbecue restaurants for believing in the power of storytelling on the internet, for helping us sell more barbecue in our restaurants, and uh, for giving us the opportunity to have incredible guests like the guest we have today, Gustavo Tosta, one of the most popular YouTubers in the world. You can find him at Guga Foods, Guga Foods, 4.1 million YouTube subscribers. Also, sous vide everything, 1.8 million YouTube subscribers. He launched a new channel, Guga. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's over 1 million YouTube subscribers. He just dropped an incredible book called Guga Breaking the Barbecue Rules. He is dominating on all social platforms, uh, including Snapchat, which all of the guests that we've had on, I don't think anyone's doing a good job on Snapchat. And so congratulations to for that. But more importantly, uh, Gustavo, welcome to the show. Thank you, my brother. What a nice introduction. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm blushing a little bit. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> hey, you know, this is, this is why we started the show. Um, we believe in the internet. We have an inherent belief in the internet and um, what you've been doing, how you've been building your brand online and all the things that are going to continue to come your way in the community. More importantly, that uh, that you, you, you've you accumulated. Um, it's powerful. It's powerful and it's exciting. And it's just the beginning. Can you answer a question for me, which is where in the world is your favorite stadium, stage or venue? Oh, that's a great question. You know, I, I don't normally go to a lot of stadiums. I wish I did more often, but my schedule is so insane. You know, we're literally making videos like uh, all the time. There is no such thing as a day off. Uh, we make, uh, you know, about 10 videos a week. Um, that is absolutely insane. So in multiple days, we have days that have... Um, uh, two videos going on and a lot of times we have special guests coming in so it is crazy but if I would have to say it uh, 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 if not I die on that kind of answer I would probably say here in Miami man the Miami Mar uh, the Miami Stadium is the one that I've been to lately um, I love sports I just wish I didn't have I had more time to uh, to to go watch it you know what I mean so we're going to go to the Miami Stadium where the Marlins play. We're going to put you on the pitcher's mound. And I'm going to say, Gustavo, um, this show is about lessons and stories. Can you talk to all these hospitality professionals? Anybody that listens to this show, no matter where you are on earth, um, whether you own a restaurant, whether you're a content creator, a food entrepreneur, uh, whether you're in sales, whether you're in marketing, if you're a hospitality professional, the creator economy is here. Um, I don't need to tell Gustavo that because he's living it. This is his business. This is his career. But I want you to to so talk. So, Sean, to sorry to yes. cut you off. Every time no. you call, every time you talk, you call me Gustavo. It, it feels like you are either my doctor or my lawyer, <laughs> and you're and you're calling my attention. Like, oh boy, I, <laughs> I better pay attention to this guy over here. If not, I'm either getting a lesson from my doctor to stop eating some wagyu, or this guy is going to want some money from me. So, and I need my lawyer. So we're going to go right. with Guga. Let's so go with Guga. Yeah. So here's the deal. No one. From the last, I don't know, <laughs> 25 years, call me that name. So it's just kind of like weird listening to it. Call me Guga, man. That's that's like you're my Dude. friend now. You know what I mean? Okay, like, well, no now one. we just became friends. That's how that's, that's right. The, yeah. That it just feels kind of <laughs> it feels kind of weird everybody every time somebody says that name. But anyway, sorry to interrupt you. No, now we're friends. Cheers no, to your brother. We're friends now, and now you're on the pitcher's mound. And I want you to tell the audience, tell the stadium full of people. How did you go from Gustavo to Guga? So unfortunately, I wish it was a really cool story. Like, you know, I'm a badass Guga, whatever. That's not it at all. So just like here in the United States, when somebody is called a certain name, um, like, you know, for example, Richard, we know we all know what Richard is called, right? Like the private parts, which I don't know if we should say it, but Dick. it's fine. It's an it's a oh, show yeah. for entrepreneurs. We're we're we're, we're, we're okay. We're okay with foul language. <laughs> so uh, in Brazil, if your name is Gustavo, 
it's automatically Google. So it's not it's not unique to me. But if you Google anything Google related now, I'm coming up every single time. But yeah. unfortunately, it's not related to me. And I wish it was. But um, it, it, it's like automatic. You know what I mean? Um, but that's the story. That's how I became. Well, that's I was born Google, basically. You know, I don't think my mom ever called me Gustavo. Wow. No one. No one. I, I like honestly, like I don't think anyone ever. Only except for if, me. If, only if, me. <laughs> if, if I like, I told you, if they want money from me, or if it's uh. something legal or something, then they'll call me by my name. But no one calls me that. But uh, but one but yeah, no. I, I mean, I became a YouTuber. Um, purely by accident, honestly, you know, uh, I love to cook, uh, my entire life since I was very young uh, and I love to eat, you know, e eating is very important to me. So I had this web design agency that I started, uh, you know, I had, I had a good amount of employees and I wanted to take the guys out every single day to eat. Um, all, all the guys that work with me, you know, I say, guys, it's lunchtime. Usually people bring their sandwiches, whatever. I was like, hell no. Let's go outside and let's go eat some barbecue. And this would be like every single day. And as you can imagine, it started getting expensive, quite expensive, you know. And we didn't like to go to like terrible stuff either. We would go to like Brazilian steakhouses and we're talking about $100 per person. Yo, yo, those things start getting real expensive, right? And then one day I just said, like, wait a second. I look at my bank account. There was no money left. So I was like, I need to do something. So I wanted to cook in the office, but I couldn't because it's a small office. You can't have an induction burner there. You can't have a, you can't, you can't have a smoker there. You can't have nothing in there. Yeah. So I was like, okay, well, the only other way that I know how is if I use sous vide. So I started using sous vide and I told my cousin, Mama, I said, Mama, grab my phone over there and just record this thing. Let's see what happens. So he did. And uh, I posted on YouTube and uh, my very first video in one day got like 20,000 views. Wow. And I'm like, wait, wait, what? People want to watch me doing this kind of crazy stuff? Because it was interesting too, because... Remember, when you cook sous vide, you got to cook it in the water bath, bring it to temperature that you want and the doneness that you want. And then once that's done, then you got to sear it. Remember, I can't sear inside my office. I will get kicked out. So we literally went to the curb on the street. We got yes. a flamethrower and we started searing meat on the curb of the street. So it was kind of interesting for people as well, not only about sous vide and obviously personality, personality and all that stuff. So that, that's what happened. And then we post the first video, got 20,000 views, and then immediately they wanted more. The audience kept asking for more. And then we just kept doing it over and over and over again. And then once that was done, then we did uh, Google Foods because I, I, I love making videos so much. It is literally like, like it's my passion, you know, um, and, and learning. Uh, I'm constantly learning with all my crazy, insane experiments, as ridiculous and stupid as they might be. Every single time there's a lesson to be learned from me. Um, so, and we just kept doing it and I wanted to do it at home. And that's when Google Food started and the rest is history. And we're here today. So well, that's why my, that's why my name is Guga. <laughs> so Guga, bring me to your own, you own an agency, you have employees, you have to make, you're doing this on the side and eventually you realize how valuable this is and how much yeah. you enjoy doing this. Yeah. How do you make, how do you make that decision? Did you sell the agency? Did you close it down? What it's did a good you do? Question. It's a good question. No one ever asked me that. Um, so uh, we started making videos and um, we just started doing really, really well. Um, and I had my agency for a very, very long time and had employees, customers and, and, and things like that. And I uh, had business partners as well. So I immediately said, you know what? Um, it's my time to move on from the agency. And um, I told my partners and I said, I don't want anything. You guys keep the entire agency. It's off. Keep the agency. Wow. I don't want any money. Just make sure that you guys take very good care of my clients because I had, I, I was, I was the president, CEO and everything. So I had an extremely good relationship. We're talking about years of relationship. You know, we're yeah. talking about some of the clients have over 10 years relationship and stuff like that. So 
that's all I really cared about. And uh, I gave my entire agency to everybody. Wow. Now, when you did that, what it wasn't an overnight decision. It was, did it take, no. it, it, it took, it took time. I mean, were you, were you Hell getting, yeah, planned? I was thinking about it. Wow. I'm just giving this <laughs> stuff away. You know, what an idiot am I and stuff like that. Uh, how do you do work for so many years and you just give it away? Um, and, but it was a, a conversation that I had with my wife and, and, and stuff like that. And we decided, we say, you know what, we're doing fine with YouTube. It, it, you know, we want to take care of everyone else that all has been with us for a while. Take it. I don't want anything back, you know? So literally just gave it away. What advice do you have for creators that are creating on YouTube that are looking for brand deals? Do you remember your first brand deal or a, a success or a failure story you can share with us? Um, yeah, I remember my very first brand deal, which was I'm a hustler uh, on that sense, because when I had <laughs> I don't don't quote me on this, but I think um, when I had 5000 subscribers on sous vide. Yeah, I said, yo, I'm using this 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 stuff uh, all the time. Maybe I, be, I should be able to connect with brand. I had only 5,000 subscribers. I love it. L let me reach out. Let me reach out to the brand and see if the brand would like to work with me. And uh, to my surprise, uh, the brand watched the video. And uh, I don't want to say the brand's name and stuff like that, but they watched the video and uh, immediately interested, immediately interested. And I was like, oh, that's fantastic. Let's cut a deal. Uh, and I'm like talking like I'm a big guy and I only have like 5,000 subscribers, you know what I mean? And my videos are getting like 20,000 views, you know, 10, you know, 30, 40,000 views each video. But uh, th that's the thing that I think most in, 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 uh, you know, YouTubers, beginners have issue with. You must value yourself yes. because if you don't, no one else will. And it is so important that they understand that. And a lot of young creators, new creators, don't think that they have much value. Yes. Listen to me. You have a lot of value. You, it is important that if if you for you to think that you must value yourself, if not, no one else will. So, and, and I had that because I had a lot of business experience, right? I had a lot of business. I had several businesses and stuff like that. So that's that's my advice to you, okay? And a brand will, listen, this is an important advice. A brand will always try to get you the cheapest they can get, right? So 99.9%, .9 they'll lowball you on your first deal. And if you go like, take the deal and you don't even negotiate, you're losing out a lot. So I always tell my friends, my YouTuber friends, it's like, you know, how much is it value to you? If the deal seems right, take the deal. If it doesn't seem right, say no. And a lot of them that say no, guess what happened? The brand they get more money. They get more money. Mm -hmm. So I always, you know, I always say no the first time. <laughs> uh, it's it's incredibly powerful advice coming from someone like you that's built what you've built, uh, especially Be for creators. You know, so many. It, it's yeah. an amazing world. We we live in a world where internet storytellers, YouTubers, podcasters, TikTokers, Instagrammers are really good at sharing stories on the internet that build an audience. That's right. the digital marketing, the internet storytelling. How do you build a business behind it? Because most people can't sustain just YouTube paying them or TikTok paying them or Meta paying them. It's not sustainable. It's not a career. No, no, no. You're absolutely right about that. Because look, reality is if you don't have the cash, you can't grow, right? So you, you must have money, not only for yourself, but also be able to hire more people, be able to talk to people. The more, the better people and the better self you take care of your people the more they're going to work harder for you yep. so and then and like you say you know money makes the world go around so you want to be able to do crazy things incredible videos and money will always help that's why mr beast does what he does 
you know what I mean? And he's spending all this kind of money and stuff like that. So it is important to value yourself right in order to, um, you know, get the deal. And believe me when I tell you, uh, if a brand offers you a amount and then you go back to them and saying like, no, I want this amount. Um, And then they say, no, that's too much for us. You can always go back to the first deal. Yes. But you will never know if you don't ask more. You will never know. So, yeah, I've learned that real quick. (laughs) From speaking of Mr. Beast, let's talk about the collaborations. Collaborations in general. Let's start with the Mr. Beast collaboration itself. Tell us the story. How did uh, did you guys team up? Jimmy uh, is literally... (laughs) He's a beast. That's all I got to say about he's not human. (laughs) I think he's from another place, like an ET or something like that. He's literally not human. (laughs) He's such a hard worker. He's like uh, constantly on, if if that makes any sense. You know, he's always thinking about the next big thing, the next video, regardless if he just finished the Squid Game video, a video that did millions of one of his biggest videos. It didn't matter. It's like, okay, now how do I top that one? So uh, being able to just share the room with him and being able to get knowledge from him, everything that he has, uh, you know, shared with me is fantastic. And um, I mean, I've done a few videos with him already that I don't remember which one was the first one, but I could tell you about the, the, the latest one that came in my head right sure. now, which was when I went to his um, uh, the inauguration of his uh, uh, restaurant, his business. Oh, wow. Oh, yo, um, I've seen, uh, uh, I've seen, I've met, uh, celebrities. I've, you know, I, I, all of that, this thing is in another level. Like when we went to the mall, uh, even a day before, because we had access to the restaurant, um, the entire mall was completely full of people that had been sleeping there for a week. And <laughs> I'm no, I'm telling you the, the, the like, and, and no one, it, what was most incredible to me that the mall was full. There was 20,000 people in there for a week. Not one single person was in a bad mood. Th- wow. That's like, That's like a big deal. You know what I mean? Because, hey, I don't care. You know, I'm a little bit chubby, right? But if I'm sleeping for a week on the floor, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be (laughs) like, I'm grumpy. (laughs) Yo, I'm not in a good mood, man. Not not one human was in a bad mood. Everybody extremely excited to, to be able to, you know, at least see him, whatever. And so, and this impressed me a lot. And and I learned that about Jimmy, that uh, he really cares. So, when, the, when it was so many people, then the event started, whatever, and then everybody started getting in line. Everyone extremely organized, tried to manage 20,000 people. But think about this. There's no way he's going to be able to meet every single one of them. There's no way. So he got upset that, like, we need to move this faster because people has been outside and there's no way I'm going to let them down. Yeah. There's no way they're going to see me. And then he was like, I'm going to walk the line. And then the security people's like, are you crazy? Are you yeah. out of your mind? What are you doing? Like, no, listen, if by the end of the day, there's still people in here, we're going to walk the line. And, and he did. Amazing. You know, and it, wow. it, so he really cares. So that impresses me a lot. I mean, there's, I, I mean, look, honestly, I could sit down here and talk about Jimmy all day long. <laughs> there's so many crazy things that he's done and uh, that, that he has inspired me and so well, forth. Give me, give me just quickly the power of collaboration. YouTubers are phenomenal at it. You're phenomenal at it. Um, talk, talk to the audience. Why, what, why is it important for hospitality, hospitality creators to collaborate? So, Collaboration is extremely important because everyone does something different and everyone has a different style. Obviously, sharing subscribers and doing that, that's one part of it as well, which is good, you know, and you can share. But it's really not the main purpose of a collaboration, at least for me. The main important thing is to be able to learn from each other and also have a friend in the end that you can rely on and talk about things because it's the things that I go through 
is unrelatable for someone that does not have a YouTube video channel and that that understand the 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 stress, that understand the difficulties such as, I mean, professional chefs come out with one menu and they run that menu for two to three months and then they change the menu. Guga has a menu every single day, you know what I mean? To come out with 10 videos a week. It, it's very, and that kind of stress and ideas and content like that. And it, it's good to rely with friends. And honestly, if you're doing something and you don't have people to share it with, it's useless, at least to me. Yeah. So being able to call my friends, say, yo, let's make a cool video. Let's just bang out a, a banger, you know, and let's make something cool. It is very important to me. Um, and regardless of how many subscribers people have, I'm going to tell you this right now. If you are a small creator and you, 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 you're trying to get along with somebody, the best way to pitch is give that creator a great idea, especially if they're big. It's like, yo, I have this great idea. I would love to, but have to be a good idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't, 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 don't turn out and say like something stupid and stuff like that. Cause then they'll just brush it off. But if you have a great idea that you think it's going to be a value uh, to the creator and yourself to make that video happen, I promise you that creator will take you seriously and do it because we're constantly looking for great ideas. We're constantly trying to innovate and something and I don't care who you are. I'll collaborate with anything. You have a great idea. We're going to make this video happen. You know what I mean? We're going to make this thing happen. And then that is your entry to that person's life. Um, yeah. And you become good friends and, and, and so forth. So collaboration is, to me is one of the greatest thing there is, man. So we, we're here on the West Coast and uh, we started a barbecue brand in San Diego. We started a barbecue media company. We've been breaking barbecue rules. You just wrote the book. Yeah. Guga, breaking the barbecue rules. Like Literally, I, I couldn't have been more excited when I saw the title of your book. Tell us, what, where, where did the inspiration come for the name and what can, uh, what can people expect in the book? Okay, so uh, I think I'm around about a very close if not surpassed already over a thousand youtube videos or a thousand videos wow. overall that's a lot of videos <laughs> uh, i've been doing this for a long time and the amount of crazy and insane experiments i have done i cannot even name them anymore um and my audience always says every single time Guga, you have so many amazing videos. Can you just make one video with all your best videos? Can you just put all your knowledge in one thing? And I wish I could, but it will be a very boring video, right? Yes. So, but not on a book. Everything that I have learned throughout the years, like of doing crazy experiments, good and bad, has been put into this thing. It's literally my soul in there. Um, not only success, but fails, why it fails, why you should season your steaks properly versus under season. I mean, I mean, I literally talk about every single thing, side dishes, um, what makes a steak better than the other steak. You don't necessarily have to have extremely expensive cut to have an incredible meal. The book literally has everything that I've learned, if, if I'm honest with you, throughout the year. So um, it took a lot of effort to write this book. I redid it probably a few times. That's why it took like two years to write this book. And uh, and I, and I don't want to rush either. You know, you have your publisher rushing you to whenever you're writing a book. I say, listen, this thing is going to come out when this thing is going to come out. It's going to come yeah. out low and slow. <laughs> like, there you out. go, baby. It's going to come you, out low yeah, and you, slow. That's right. <laughs> you let them know. Exactly. And we uh, build our books and we build our media like we build our barbecue. Slow and it slow. It is. It is because, you know, I don't know if I'll write another book. And um, I wanted to do this one very special. I wanted to answer every questions that I have ever been asked. And also, you know, I never had professional training in, 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 as a chef. So I wanted to make sure that 
it was relatable to people. Anyone, regardless of your experiment, experience with cooking or stuff like that, can open that book, read it, follow it, and it's going to be perfect every time. So that, that, that was the whole goal. I love it. So uh, every single week on Wednesday and Friday on the social audio app Clubhouse, we have creators, restaurant owners, sales professionals, marketing professionals join our community. Um, it's 10 a.m. Pacific time, but I want to give a shout out to Smokin' Joe's Pit Barbecue in El Paso, Texas. He is a YouTuber turned restaurant owner. So he hits the heart of everything that we do on this show, restaurant influencers. Uh, he has 200,000 subscribers on YouTube, but now he is in the restaurant business. My question uh, for Guga is when, when, when are the restaurants coming? Oh, good question. So as a matter of fact, we have our book tour going on right now. I yes. am so excited uh, <laughs> to, I've never done this before. I, I, um, you know, I never like did like a greet and meet, whatever it's yeah, called. Meet with, with, uh, yeah, meet and greet. Exactly. So I, I'm so excited. Miami is completely sold out already. Sweet. Um, and then we have St. Louis and we have Austin going. And on those places, I have so many restaurants like yes. saying like, yo, Google, come on over. Yeah. I'm, and I'm like, I'm replying to every single one of them. Hell yeah, I'm going. And, then, <laughs> and, and my, and my, and my agent was like, yo how how are you saying yes and then we, we need to like clone you it, it's not humanly possible and stuff right. like that but i'm a big fan of the restaurant business i'm a big i'm, I'm a, okay i have an extreme amount of respect for people that have their own restaurant because it is not easy no. it, it it is difficult um but 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 it's it's possible to be extremely successful <clears throat> I don't want to say that I'm not going to do a restaurant because I think maybe there is really close, but maybe in the future. But uh, let's just say that there has been talks about it. You yes. know what I mean? About the really interesting concept. And the one that convinced me was Josh, Joshua Wiseman. And he was telling me, we just did a collaboration last week. And uh, he, he that's all he talks about restaurants because he works in restaurants and yep. stuff like that. Uh, let's just say there might be some, some. <laughs> well, there's never been a better time for collaborators, for YouTubers, for podcasters. I mean, the, there's an exciting world. This is an exciting world. The internet connects all of us in ways that we've never thought possible. And uh, we're grateful for you for curating your content into a book. So thank you for breaking the barbecue rules, putting them in one place where audience can come and find you. Uh, we'll put links to all the YouTube channels, um, all the social channels into the show notes. Uh, any parting words of wisdom for the hospitality creators out there? Uh, if you are ever afraid to do something, just do it. Don't be afraid to, you know, make yourself vulnerable because it will make it real. It is okay, especially for chefs and the people in the hospitality industry are sometimes afraid to like do something crazy and something more like you would do in your kitchen. You just don't want to show it, right? Just do it, man, because it will show your personality. It will be fine. And your, uh, even if it's a fail, your audience will understand you because you're being real and um, everyone fails, everyone, even Gordon Renzi and just learn from it and do it again. But the thing is, just keep on doing it, man. Just keep on doing it and you will be successful no matter it is what it is that you do. I appreciate that. Yeah. If you guys want to follow me, it's at Sean P. Walchef, S-H-A-W-N-P-W-A-L-C-H-E-F. No matter where you are in the world, I'll leave you with this. Gustavo, you are now Guga forever for me. I'll leave you with the uh, my favorite philosopher, which is Winnie the Pooh, and that's we will be friends forever. Just you wait and see. This was the episode where Gustavo became Guga for me. And, that's right. Uh, that's a Guga, funny thing Guga for the that world. That's funny thing you said that because every time I do a collaboration, pay attention in the end of the video. We always, I always say is we're friends for life. Friends forever. That's Winnie the Pooh, the great That's philosopher. Right. Yeah. He, you. We hope to see you in San Diego sometime and uh, look forward to the next time that we, uh, we get to collaborate. And a special thank you to our title sponsor, Toast. Toast is the primary technology partner that we use at our restaurant, Cali Barbecue. It is also the primary technology partner that so many of the guests have shared with us on this show. 
people like Sam the Cooking Guy, Stacy Poonkinney, Jeff Alexander. So many times the guests tell us that they're using toast when we didn't even know that going into the interview. That is why we are so grateful that they sponsor this show. We want you to win. You that listen to this show, we want you to improve your digital hospitality. Toast is built for restaurants and it's built for you. Toast is the restaurant first platform that's built for your needs, whatever your size, concept, or ambitions. Improve your bottom line with a customizable platform that's easy to learn, use, and grow with. And it meets you where you are with all the right tools for your price point. If you have any questions about Toast, please DM me at Sean P. Walchef, S H A W N P W A L C H E F. I will get you the link to the right toast contact in your market. It's so important that if you listen to this show that you win. We want you to be on this show eventually. Let us know that you heard the show, you heard about toast, you implemented toast, you did a toast unboxing in your restaurant. Talk to us about how you've impacted your village, your city, your community. Share your toast story with us. DM me today to learn more and be sure to check out toast.